Hello, and welcome to another edition of Spotlighting Paradise. I'm your host, Henry White. It's our first show of the 2014 year. So we're back, better than ever, and we have an amazing, phenomenal guest for you to start off the new year. And my guest today is Bobby Davis, photographer extraordinaire. He is representing New Dawn Photos, and he's here to share with us, as you will see in just a few minutes, some amazing um, photos that he has captured over the years of some of our nation's greatest jazz legends. I am totally pumped and psyched about this. Welcome to the show, Thank Bobby. You much, good How are you? Here. Real good to be here. Good, Thank good you. to see you, man. You don't know. I, Happy I don't New know Year. If you're feeling. <laughs> Happy New Year to you as well, man. So listen, we're going to jump right into it because mm -hmm. we got a lot to talk about. Um, let's go back. Um, take us back a little bit to uh, Rhode Island. Um, and I got a chance to talk to you mm -hmm. and get a little bit of your background. But I want the folks out there to, to, to know a little bit how, how you got to the valley here. Um, and if, if I'm correct, it was you started out in Providence, Providence, Rhode, Providence, Rhode Island. Island. It's my hometown. Hometown, Providence, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. Born okay. and raised, born in Pawtucket, raised in Providence, and uh, got into music, I guess, when I was about 18, playing piano. Okay. And I did uh, a full year of just scales. Mm -hmm. I just did scales for a whole year because a friend of mine who's a horn player, ridiculous horn player. This this guy could off the album do train all over the place. Play Cold Train, do James Brown's Maceo like mm -hmm. you wouldn't believe. He inspired me to get into piano. I got into it, did scales for one year. One year later, New Year's Eve, mm -hmm. I got a gig, Bobby. What do you mean you got a gig? We got a gig. I said, I haven't played. What do you mean? I've never. <laughs> Long story short, we're doing a blues gig, New Year's Eve. He said, everybody does gigs New Year's Eve. Come on, Absolutely. do the gig. So I'm out there doing a gig with him and other people. Couldn't believe I was out there, but I had an ear so I could hear what was Absolutely. going on and fill and do what I had mm -hmm. to do. So it was my very first gig. And I think after that, I was gigging ridiculously afterward. And um, that's where I began piano and... Uh, started playing and loved R&B and loved jazz. Right. I heard a Herbie, not Herbie Hancock, I heard Ramsey Lewis. Ramsey Lewis, I okay. I heard a Ramsey Lewis. Sun Goddess. Right. The Sun Goddess. Uh, before Sun before Goddess. Sun, okay. Sun Goddess was by uh, was the Earth, Wind and Fire. Earth, Wind and Fire's uh, Maurice. Absolutely. Maurice but that was a collaboration. One, but with Maurice used to gig with mm -hmm. Ramsey Lewis. Okay. So I learned some of Ramsey's material, listening to it, fell in love with what was going on with his music, and that's how I started getting into music. There were times when I would be living in Boston years later, mm -hmm. um, and I heard, come back to Providence, and one of my boys said, oh, you gotta hear this new guy, you gotta hear this new guy. I'm saying, okay, okay, who? We're going to a house party. I said, all right, cool, cool. And he said, this guy is unbelievable, man, unbelievable. His name is Herbie Hancock. I said, Are new guy? Me? What do you mean, new guy? He said, this is a new guy, man. This guy, Herbie Hancock, man. He, I said, Herbie Hancock, man. I was playing Maiden Voyage, you right, know, in right. gigs left and right. What do you mean, a new guy? He said, oh, yeah. Anyhow, I go to the house party, and he said, you'll hear it, you'll hear it. You'll be on, and we're listening to all music and dancing. And then all of a sudden, boom, 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 Kicked on, and I said, oh, who's this? He said, that's that new guy, that's the Herbie. I said, that's not Herbie, that's Herbie. I said, oh, he had changed his whole Chameleon. Chameleon was a tune, and that was how, you know, just one of the musicians and her pianist that I fell in love with. Wow. Recently did his photos at the Fine Arts Center. Right. Um, wasn't supposed to, but okay, I had to. Now, and we'll get to them. <laughs> we'll get to them photos. And folks, I got to tell you, they, these photos are incredible. You can probably see. Uh, I'm sure you can see uh, some of them that's flashing in the background now. But wait until. Um, okay, I'm just going to tease <laughs> you with that for now. So, you were in Providence, 
And um, I think I read something where y your father was very influential in, in, in talking to you and he gave you a message. But my father told me when I was gigging all over the country and mm -hmm. in and out of Canada after high school, he told me, promise me you'll go and look into college. And I had promised I would. Mm -hmm. So while I was on the road, exhausted, this is when I believe swine flu first was ever in existence really? when it first came out. Okay. And I was on the road in uh, Danbury, Connecticut. <clears throat> the drummer was sick, I was sick, uh, someone else in the band was sick, and we were doing a tune, uh, Swear to God. Okay. Uh, swear to God, pop, 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 weapon, pop, 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 Anyhow, we're doing that, and the bass player side went out, and he was connected same side with the guitarist. Their side of the stage went out. The drummer, who was sick as a dog, kept going. Right. I kept going with the piano, and I'm playing all the parts. I'm doing the bass. I'm doing the whole situation. Mm -hmm. And at the point where the lead singers are going on, they do a mime of ba ba da, ba ba da, ba ba da, mm -hmm. I love you. And I'm doing ba ba da, and I'm doing the bass. You're and doing I'm it playing all. And I'm okay. doing the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, that was in Danbury. Sick as a dog, being on the road for many, many years. And then it got to the point where, like, I'm tired. Right. So at one point, I admit, uh, I went I went to the jazz workshop in right. Boston. In Boston, okay. And that's where I was living at the time. Mm -hmm. I went to the jazz workshop in Boston, and the jazz workshop is a place where you would walk in, and to your right, you have the jazz workshop. To the left, you have what's known as Paul's Mall. Right. That's and where all everybody the, everybody uh, would go to either side. Wherever somebody <laughs> somebody is there would be it. No, they'd be at either side. I right. mean, it was okay. like uh, you'd have all sorts of incredible jazz artists at the workshop. Right. And more of the R and B, the uh, LTD might be uh, right. Billy Paul would right. be Billy Paul's Paul, and, right. and they might have some jazz performers mm -hmm. there. And, and I'm not crazy mm -hmm. with the term jazz, but anyhow, we won't go into right. that. Okay. Um, anyhow, when I was there. And I had met Billy Paul in Providence, Rhode Island at Brown University uh, a couple of years earlier. <clears throat> and Billy Paul of the, the famed me and me, me and Mrs. Me and Mrs. Mrs. Jones. Jones. Okay, yeah. We got okay. Up. Yeah. So, so anyhow. Keep dropping those names. <laughs> <on>. <laughs> Billy Paul was there and I was seeing Billy Paul. <clears throat> took a break. Right. And he took a break and I went to the bar, grabbed a beer. So I'm um, having my beer. Who walks in? from the workshop, the jazz workshop, but McCoy Tyner. Now everybody's jaw, wow. including mine, right. dropped to the floor. Yeah, We're big. looking in this McCoy Tyner. So, excuse me, I see him step in and I'm like, couldn't believe it. And where does he go? He sits down. Right next right to Right next to me. <laughs> you know, there's room in the club to sit down, but he comes next to me. He orders a, a, a orange juice and um, just cool down. Sounds now, like me. <laughs> <laughs> so I just basically pulled myself together and said, you know, pick my jaw up off the floor and decided to talk to the man, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm talking with him in regard to what it's like for me on the road and what does he suggest in terms of how to resolve some of these issues of being completely beat up and worn out. Yeah. And McCoy yeah. says, well, look, you know, you got a high school diploma? I said, yeah. And uh, he, before that, talked to me in regard to lessons and mm -hmm. do I have money for it and all. And I spoke to him about having studied with Madame Cello for a short while. Wow. She gave me lessons for free because she heard me mm -hmm. play. But anyhow, I couldn't afford it anymore because I was on the road and couldn't keep up with the lessons, which was a very, very unfortunate situation. Uh, because those of you that know, don't know Madame Cello, <clears throat> Herbie Hancock, uh, Chick Corea, I think Keith Jarrett studied wow. with Madame Cello. Anyhow. They've all studied under her. They've studied under her. Yeah. She is so the one. Time. She's the one. Oh, absolutely. Um, well, McCoy was telling me, look, you know, what you need to do, if you got a high school diploma, this is in the 70s, there is money available, you're a person of color, go to college, see mm -hmm. what you can do. So I decided to, it was about a year and a half later, that I decided, you know, I've got to get out of here and organize being away from this band and being on the road, which I wasn't comfortable with at all. So a friend of mine from Rhode Island 
lived a couple houses down from me, was here at UMass, and he was telling me about, well, there's Archie Shep here, there's Max Roach here, there's wow. this and that and the other, and I'm saying, yeah, right, sure there is, okay, <laughs> no big deal. I'm, but I wasn't concerned about that because as far as I was concerned, I promised my dad I would look at it. Right. So I said, let me go to college. I jump in and uh, manage my way through to get into UMass, and uh, sure enough, Archie Shep was here, Max Roach was here, right. and uh, um, 77, I showed up in the area and uh, fell in love with it. And uh, Like a lot of other people, the right. valley is a great place. It's a good place, and uh, meeting the musicians I was meeting was ridiculous. But, oh, I can yeah. imagine, yeah. and we're going to talk a, a little bit about that. Um, so, when you, you, you arrived here, you, you're going to school here, and um, you decide that you wanted to do some activism on campus, mm -hmm. and you start getting involved in, was it the... New the, 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 which is part of the Collegiate. Which is yeah. part of the Collegiate, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And so, tell the folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was doing, going to write an article on Michael Gregory Jackson, and that was at the uh, Cape Cod Lounge. Right, and Michael student, Gregory Jackson. Jackson, the right. legendary. Not Michael not, Jackson. Not, no, not, not Michael, Michael Jackson, Jackson but, but Michael, Michael Gregory, Gregory Jackson. Okay, right. Yeah, it's from, from the this area. from this area. Guitar player. Who's actually, right. I believe, is a teacher. Uh, I think he's teaching out in Berkeley now. Uh, no, no, he was in Berkeley. Okay. He was. I believe right. he was in California. But he was I just think, in. The, I, he was here doing a, a performance at the, uh, at the loft, Clary, at the Clarion. Just the recently, loft. a couple recently, months ago, right. exactly. Um, but Very well known. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, oh, yeah. yeah. And um, mm -hmm. I believe he's in Vermont right now. Okay. I believe he's in Vermont. But um, he was doing a performance, and there was no photographer mm -hmm. there. So I ran to the paper, which was in the same building, ran down to the paper, grabbed the camera, came back upstairs and said to someone that I knew, in the audience, how do you use this thing? I don't know, blah, blah. anyhow. She showed me what to do, and my first photos were of Michael Gregory, but I had to push the film, which is a process, instead of basically using the film at its regular 400 ASA, it's like lying to the film and getting your light meter to read what you needed to read. Right. So I lied to the camera, basically saying, I'm shooting it, I believe it was 800 or 1600. And then I was getting some shots, but I was being half cool about it. I was laying on the floor in front of him mm -hmm. and reflecting light off his guitar into my camera and him and getting shots wow. that way. And why did I do it? Because I needed the light meter to read <laughs> what I wanted it to read. Right. And I was waiting for different shots because as a musician, you can anticipate the crescendos. You can anticipate where the music's going Absolutely. and what's involved with how the musician is going to feel. And even if he didn't feel that way, I did. Right, You right. know, so I was grabbing shots and that's pretty consistent in terms of what I've done to a certain extent with most of what I've done. So. When I went to the darkroom the next day, not knowing anything about a darkroom, there was someone down there who taught me how to develop the film and develop the photos. Wow. I'm developing the photos, printing them out, and a knock comes at the door. Um, it was the Amherst Regular, the Amherst Gazette, whatever it was called back then, I forgot. Um, and they said, uh, we saw you upstairs last night and we need a photo for the paper. So, <laughs> so I don't know if they're any good. These are the first photos I've ever mm -hmm. taken. Guy looks in, says, those are perfect. I can see the contrast and all this, and boom, they're really good. I, they're, they're what I want. I'm saying, what? And, the, and uh, the paper took, we got photos in mm -hmm. the paper. Next thing I know, a week later, Michael Gregory came to me and was talking about, these are some of the finest photos I've seen done of me, and can we talk about doing uh, wow. press work? And I'm, wait a minute. <laughs> Whoa, I don't know anything. Phew. We didn't end up doing press work, but this is just some of how things began. Just kind of fall in line fall for in you. Line. From, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. Um, it sounds like that, that was the, the birth of your photography uh, career. Yeah. Um, and um, bef 
couple of things. One is I just want to share a quick story of how we met. Mm -hmm. um, I was at uh, myself and Kate, um, who's another uh, member of the board of directors here, Northampton Community TV. We were at um, in Amherst at that event called uh, Give Life to Art. Right. And uh, there was a lot of great people there, and uh, give a shout out to John and Naomi and those who put that on. And uh, so I think I excused myself for a minute. I came back, and Kate was actually talking to you, and I guess you were showing her some photos. And she goes, Henry, you got to come. You got to come here and meet this guy. I'm like, and, and you were going through your phone and just showing us those photos and we were both like just totally totally amazed <laughs> and thank um you, thank you thank you uh so that was one of the the uh the great moments of of you just never know who you know you you, you meet and th this valley is full of uh great folks like that with with um interesting uh, this valley and rich is, background this valley is packed Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, and it's unbelievable. So um, we're going to take a quick break mm -hmm. um, because I really want to start. Um, I really want to give the folks out there uh, the visuals of some of the, these photos that you have. And we're going to name drop. Um, okay. Okay. But before we do, I'm actually, if, if you don't mind, what mm -hmm. I'm going to do is just show the folks out there just one of the people that uh you shot and where was ray charles at he was at the fine arts center he was at yeah. the, the fine arts center okay. and, and i'm uh, going to just kind of raise it here a little bit that was backstage there this uh, was backstage at the fine arts center yeah. you remember the year no i do not okay no, i've well, got a little bit of research ahead of me right <laughs> okay yeah. so we'll be right back and we're going to talk more with bobby davis about some of the many legendary jazz artists that he has shot right here in the valley Okay, so welcome back to Spotlighting Paradise. Again, I'm your host, Henry White. My guest is none other than the photographer extraordinaire, Bobby Davis. And we're going to go right into some of these amazing photos that he has. Okay, let's name drop a little bit here. <laughs> this is, I'm excited about this part, Bobby. So let's start with Mr. Archie Shep. Yeah. Okay. Right. The one and only Archie Shep. The one Shep. and only. The master. The yeah. master. Exactly. Uh, Where was that shot at, by the way? That was at, uh, I don't remember the name of the church on Elm Street here. Right the one that's, uh, Smith College. But that's attached to Smith, yeah. I guess it's the Helen one of Smith Hughes College's churches. Or, is it the Helen Hughes? I'm not, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But, um. Jesse Jackson was uh, doing Rainbow Coalition, I believe that was in 84. When he, when he was running for president. Running for president. And mm -hmm. uh, Jesse had been speaking and many members of the community that were working with Jesse were on stage and all. And I don't know if Archie was supposed to or not be there, but he showed up. Right. And again, just to see Archie Shep was another wonderful situation. And uh, I was shooting and grabbed some shots of him while he was there on stage and hadn't realized that one of the photos was he with the crucifix hinted at the back of his, right. coming out of his forehead. Yeah, that's and, an incredible uh, photo. And then uh, later on, years later, I was, because I knew Archie. I could tell you stories about working with Archie and hanging right. out with Archie and uh, he became my teacher. He plays horn, but he could play an incredible stride piano. He plays an incredible stride piano. Really? And um, at one point, he said to me, we were at the New Africa House, and he said to me, look, um, I'm going to be at the uh, Village Vanguard. You know, you want, you want to go? And I said, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, he said, yeah, don't, don't worry about it. Your, your name's at the door. You know, just go ahead in. So right. I was, friend and I took off, and shot up to New York and right. uh, hung out backstage on wow. with him and it was just a great experience because it's Archie. You oh know, it absolutely. Archie. Now yeah. I'm gonna go down to yeah. uh, let's see here let's right here Mr. Miles Davis. Yeah yeah. The Miles the Davis. Miles, yeah. Miles. Now where was that uh, shot? That was at the Fine Arts Center. That was at the Fine Arts yeah. Center. You Fine Arts. Okay. And, uh, Miles, it was weird. He was there either like a Monday or a Tuesday, which was at that point unusual. I didn't realize 
but other concerts were usually on weekends or mm -hmm. close to the weekend. Um, and uh, Miles just came in and was Miles. Incredible, incredible, incredible musician. Of all musicians I had hoped I could gig with at some point in my life, Miles. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when I was a kid learning music and I would be in Providence listening to music, and this is, I think, even before I played piano, I would have one of many of his albums, and I knew his albums so well, I could, in bed, recorders, record players mm. at that time would lift the arm up and lay it right. down on the... Well, I would be able to lift the arm up in the dark, put it on the next tune or whatever tune I wanted in the dark, oh, on point, yeah. without That's having crazy. to look at it. <laughs> and that was how often I would listen to Miles right. and then oh, uh, yeah. uh, 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 Wynton Marcellus. Wynton, right. no, 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 not Wynton, I'm sorry, um, Wayne Shorter. Listen okay, to Wayne Shorter's. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but speaking of Wenton, you you actually shot him um, right, as, right, at right. Uh, Look Park, Look I Park. believe, right? Right, right. right. That and was with uh, I believe with, the photo was over there somewhere. With um, oh, that was with uh, that's with um, that Art, yeah, that's that's Art Blakey. Yeah, that's, that's Art Blakey, Blakey right here at Look Park. At Look and, Park, um, and Wenton Marcellus Wynton was there. Wenton Marcellus was nineteen, wow. but he and his brother Branford were both there, so I got shots of Wenton Branford and art separately and together. Wow. So it was just one of those things where, and the other person that was there, let, let me back up, Miles. Miles was doing the show and right after the show, it was in November, I believe it was 81, right after the show, he left and went to Bill Cosby's house. Did he? And he got married to Cecily Tyson. Right, right. And Andrew Young was the minister. Right. Because he's an ordained minister. He's a registered but yeah um i'm just gonna mention the name and you just tell me where they were uh -huh. melba moore fine arts center the fine arts center yeah. gil scott haran who was actually one of my favorites gil scott was at pearl street was at pearl street right. okay um i actually met gil scott on the streets of harlem myself well i've got some stories about oh, gil yeah. scott <laughs> uh how about um max roach max was the fine arts center Really? And, and what's wild is I did not know, I knew Max was here because of my friend telling me, but I did not know his son. Mm -hmm. And his son grew up in East Providence, Rhode Island. Wow. Now, I'm from Providence. I did not know his son from right. East Providence. But my friend who I came to school here to connect with mm -hmm. knew about him and he introduced him to me, and we became really cool at that point. And one day, Raul says to me, come on down the hall, I want you to meet someone. So I'm going down the hall, he says, you know, we walk into the radio station in New Africa House, and he says, Bobby, I want you to meet. I said, shut up, man. <laughs> it was his father, it was Max Roach. It was Max big old Roach. Fur coat. Wow. Yeah, and it was How about John Mc McLaughlin? John McLaughlin was at the Fine Arts Center, too. Really? Um, and he was with... Uh, Paco DeLuca and it was John McLaughlin, Paco DeLuca and uh, Al Di Wow. Yeah. Angela Bofill. Angela. Oh, a voice of an angel. Angela. Actually, the, I think she have, even had a song. Like right. That, I think the name that. Angela was beyond magnificent in terms of her work. Oh, which beautiful she did. voice. Um, Where was she? Too, she was at Balka Auditorium. Okay. Balco Auditorium at UMass. Um, Show the folks out here. This is another one of my favorite ones that uh, of Mr. Dizzy. Dizzy Gillespie, yeah. Yeah. Dizzy was, uh, that was at uh, Hampshire College. What was his College. nickname? Didn't they have the Diz? a... Yeah. The Diz? Yeah. Um, Diz? Yes. Not that I know of offhand. Okay, I'm sure right, he right, probably right. did. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure yeah, everybody's exactly. got their yeah, nicknames, yeah. but yeah. I'm, I may be thinking of yeah. But he was at... Uh, Hampshire College. At Hampshire College. That was in Hampshire College, yeah. Well, and then the shots of like Blue Magic that I have, they were at Amherst College, and then, uh, I mean. Uh, and then some local folks, uh, Avery Sharp. Avery Sharp, right, um, right, right. And um, I know you're, you're good friends with Charles Neville, Charles, Neville Brothers, and right. I mean, we could, you know what, I gotta be honest <laughs> with you, I could sit here and talk to you. I mean, we, when we met the other day, I mean, we ended up talking for a couple of hours, <laughs> man, and I, I feel like we was just tipping the iceberg. Dude. And. Uh, I've been very fortunate, very, blessed, absolutely blessed 
to have the family that I've got Absolutely. at home, magnificent wife, been with this woman, feels like five years, it's been 33 years and 34 years. Wow. And uh, magnificent son, magnificent daughter, so I've been blessed there. And then to have been fortunate enough to meet many of the people that I photographed. Oh, and, absolutely. And, and then I stopped for many years and now it's coming back and I'm meeting more yeah. people. And I mean, not meeting them, hello, how you doing? No, but Getting you're actually to connecting. meet and connect yeah, and with some of these people. With folks. Yeah. And, and, and I'm just a regular somebody. I'm not like, oh, move, you're this now. Well, you, it may be changing, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, You represent exactly what we talk about a lot here in the valley that there's a lot of people in this valley who are incredible people with credible backgrounds and stories and um, I really appreciate you coming by and sharing your, your stories and your photos here I think we need to do a part two I told you that yesterday we need to have you back because we gotta we gotta finish here I'm gonna start wrapping up here um, but again I really want to thank you thank um, you thank and you, um, folks I would encourage you to go to the website. It's New Dawn Photos, photos with an F, newdawnphotos.net. And uh, you'll see, uh, you can go on and see more in the gallery. You can contact Bobby if you like. UMass Archives is actually uh, working directly with him, so you can also they will go, get, go there. And hopefully he has will be going shows on. at the Clarion um, that's up now, and he'll be doing something in March that will probably be on his website um, shortly. Um, before I wrap up, I always want to give a shout out to the staff and the interns here at NCTV. Thank you guys. You guys make us look good, and we appreciate you. If you have any show comments, feel free to contact me directly at spotlightingparadise at gmail.com or at northamptontv.org. Um, thanks for tuning in. Before I leave you, I'll leave you with this. Life is for the living. Death is for the dead. Let life be the music and death a note unsaid. And that's from the late, great Lakes and Hughes. Until next time on Spotlighting Paradise, Peace and blessings and keep the faith.